What's up everybody? I'm Michael Chris, three years running bestseller at Shine On. Now I'm the CMO of Shine On. I wanted to thank you so much for checking out our YouTube video. And if you like this kind of content, I want you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy the video. So how do you uh, how do you organize and keep track of it all? Do you use Trello, a spreadsheet? How do you do it? I like uh, Trello. I've used plenty, many times. I usually use Asana these days, which is just very similar to Trello. Um, but any type of, even just a spreadsheet, just however you can organize it for you and your team or whatever you're using, um, use that. Because, it, it, again, it's very simple steps, but when you start popping out like 30 designs in a week, you're going to overlap. You know, you want to really plan ahead. And, again, on the budget side, if you are low budget, you got to be thinking about that too. You don't, If you have 30 designs yeah. and you don't have $3,000 to do the testing budget, you might want to only launch five or 10 and then hold off just in case things do go off and you want to scale something, you won't have that budget to push forward. And like you've been mentioning, Etsy, you should do all your designs, even if you're launching on Facebook and Shopify or anything like that, put them on Etsy too, because that's just extra yeah. sales. It's organic. I mean, there's no reason not to. And I know many people who do six figures a year easy just from Etsy and organic traffic, no advertising. Um, so the, that's kind of part of our process after we we launch as well as getting our designs out to all the other platforms, our email, our Etsy or Amazon, if we're going that route, Google ads, if we're doing that, you know. Yeah, I dig it. So let's go back to your spreadsheet real quick. Yeah. Give me, if you can, man, give me some specifics. Like what are you, what are you, tr what data points are you tracking in that spreadsheet to make sure you're not just getting lost in the volume of all the tests and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Well, I mean, pretty much we have our, our amount of designs we want done per week. So that is number one that kind of controls all the outsourcing or the, the research, the design aspects that happen up to that. Then we have the advertising side. Each one we're going to hit, try and hit a 2x um, budget. That's how much we're going to spend. That's how much we test. If we're breaking even or above, we keep that on and moving forward. Even if something's made a sale or even at that amount of point hasn't made a sale, but showing a lot of promise, I'll even maybe let it go on a little bit further. But we try and not break from those initial testing rules. So if I want to spend $70 per ad test, I don't want to go, you know, 140 on one and then 50 on the other. We're trying to always stick with those kind of guidelines we preset to kind of move yeah. forward. That allows us to take emotion out of the game as with anything with making money. Um, you want to definitely do that because a lot of times we'll get stuck on our own designs and you'll maybe spend $300 or $400. Oh, it's going to sell. People are going to love it. I love it. But it's the market will tell you. So you got to stick with that system and those metrics. Totally, dude. And I love it too, because it's just, you can hear when, when you're talking, how like just kind of focused on the system you are, like yeah. you have an exact budget for every single test and it's mm -hmm. important to you that they don't go over or under it. And you try to launch things at the same time and they try to evaluate them at the end of the week exactly. at the same time, that kind of thing. When so you keep your numbers I that static, what you can do is then you can kind of guess early. Because you'll see the cost of cost per click or the cost yeah. per the cart or the percentages, totally. and you'll be able to see within ten dollars, oh, we might be onto something, you know. So, and then you can push more. Or if it's going the opposite way, you might be able to turn off. You know, I turn off early a lot too if things are not panning out for it. If it's just cr crashing or whatever, I'm not going to spend seventy when I can shut off at fifty. But those kind of things will give you a little bit of indicators. Yeah. And a good, good, you know, you also kind of have to know your niche to do that because exactly. each demographic performs a little differently on Facebook. Exactly. This is why, um, you know, my IM algorithm method, I was able to work with 250 to 500 ad sets at a given time nice. every single day is because like I would literally watch them like some a day trader watches the stock market refreshing ads manager every right. 10 or 15 seconds. And I would kill all the ad sets that weren't yeah. meeting my KPIs that I'd exactly. set for them. But yeah. the thing was, is I could only do that because I knew my niche mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. I knew when one of those ad sets were popping off yeah. and I knew when one of them were, was losing. Exactly. Right? Hey, hey, Michael here again. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you like the content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And there's one more thing I want you to do. Check out the links in the description below. I want you to look at the link to shineon.com where you can sign up and become a seller with us today. It literally takes 60 seconds and it could change your life. 
Secondly, I want you to go to our Facebook group. It's the most engaged e-commerce group on the planet. We're constantly sharing important tips, tricks, and things like that that can help you on your seller journey and level up your e-commerce game. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you have a great one. Take care.